पेपर अक्टूबर नवंबर 2018 पेपर 21 सो डायग्राम शोस अ पार्ट ऑफ अ माइक्रोमीटर स्क्रू वॉच व्हाट इज द स्मॉलेस्ट शेडिंग दैट कैन बी अचीव विदिन दिस माइक्रोमीटर स्क्रू वॉच सो लेट्स जस्ट रीड द करंट वैल्यू ऑफ द माइक्रोमीटर स्क्रू वॉच व्हिच करेंटली सेस 3.36 मिलीमीटर सो दैट गिव्स अस दैट इज सो दैट दैट मींस दिस मेजर्स फॉर द एक्यूरेसी ऑफ 0.01 मिलीमीटर so the answer must be 0.01 mm because that is the lowest it can actually go if you place it on zero here and you place it on the lowest here can be one would be one so that is the lowest the value can actually go so a small light bulb is ball is dropped from the top of a tall building which graph shows how the speed of the ball changes with time so This graph is not possible due to air resistance. In this graph, the speed is decreasing. The sp speed will never decrease of an object. Cannot decrease. So this will. The object is challenged with the air, and there is a constant acceleration of the object. So the speed cannot decrease. So this cannot be true. Let's come to C. So, what is happening is C is the object is leaving reaching terminal velocity, which happens when the upward force is equal to the downward force. So there is a ball dropping. So this force is equal to the resistive forces of the air resistance. Due to which, what happens is that M A one is equal to M A two. So, as a one is equal to a two, a one minus a two is equal to zero. So there is no acceleration. So when there is no acceleration at at this point, there will be a constant velocity. Yeah. So there will be a constant velocity at this point. So due to that constant, and what happens is that the as velocity increases. The resistive forces will also increase because the resistive forces are proportional to velocity. So, when as the velocity increases, the resistive forces will increase and the acceleration of the object will will decrease because of the resistive forces. As F R gets closer to F, so the correct answer will be C. The runner runs 300 meters at an average speed of 3 meter per second. So let's just draw the diagram. D S T. Triangle of distance, speed, and time. So what we have here is that we have the distance that is 300, and the average speed that is 3. 300 by 3. That gives us a time of 100 seconds for the first part. He then runs another 300 meters at an average speed of six. So that is 300 by six. That is one. That's two. 100 by two is equal to 50 seconds. So total. So the total time duration would be 100 plus 50. That is equal to 150 seconds. So 150 seconds, and then what is this? 600. So 600 by 150 is equal to. That gives us the speed to be four centimeter, four meter per second. All right. So move on to the next question. A helium balloon is a helium balloon is tied to a top pan balance. A metal block of mass hundred grams is placed on the balance. The reading on the balance is ninety one grams. The statement can be deduced from this experiment. A balloon exerts a downward force of 0.09 newtons at the top of or top pan. The balloon does exert a force of 0.9 newtons, but that is upwards. So, and it says here that the force exerted is downward. So, the option, this option is incorrect. The mass of minus 9g. So, the mass of the balloon might be mass of minus 9g. First of all, mass. Can not be negative. So 
This is false. The mass helium balloon has helium has a mass of nine grams. So this is not something that can be deduced from the experiment that the helium must have a gram of nitrogen. We we all all we know that the force exerted by the helium is zero point zero nine. Resultant downward force on the top band valence is zero point nine one newton. So this can be proven. So ninety one divided by one thousand. So to get it in kgs, that would be one two three. So zero point zero nine one kgs. And taking the mass as ten. Okay, taking the gravitational field as ten, then that gives us zero point nine one meter per second square. Kg meter per second square. That is zero point nine one nine one newton. So resultant downward force is zero point nine two newtons. The liquid has a volume of zero point zero four meter cube and a mass of three hundred gram. So basically, what they what they are trying to do here in this question is that they give, have given the mass in grams and they have given the volume in meter per meter cube. So what we are going to do is we are going to convert Grams into kilograms. That will thirty thousand by one thousand. Cancel this out. That gives us thirty kgs. Now we divide thirty kgs divided by zero point zero four. Now that gives us seven fifty kg per meter cube. So the answer will be C. The resultant force of four newtons acts on an object of mass zero point five kg for three seconds. So first of all, F is equal to m. So F is equal to m into change in v by t. So that gives us m is zero point five. The change in v and time is equal to three seconds multiplied by four. So that is that can be represented as a. Let's write that as one by two into one by a uh, change in v by three. One by change in v by six is equal to four. So change in v is equal to six into four. Six to that will twenty-four. So change in v is equal to twenty-four. Answer would be D. Question number seven. The question lists some quantities, and we have been asked which of the quantities, which pair of the quantities are both vectors. So first of all, what is a vector and what is a scalar? A vector is a quantity that has direction and magnitude. A scalar is a quantity that just has magnitude but has no direction. A possible example for scalar is distance. Distance does not have any direction. A distance can be like this. Okay, so this is a path, and the distance is maybe it's four kilometers. But a vector is the displacement. This is the most classic example. The vector has a a direction. If we placed north over here, we know that this is east. This over here, downwards direction is south, and therefore this direction is some degrees south from east. so a vector all always has a direction a scalar just has magnitude okay so question 7 lists four quantities first one is acceleration so let's think about if acceleration is a vector i think acceleration is a vector because we always talk in terms of acceleration when we have velocity and velocity is a vector therefore acceleration must be a vector so this over here acceleration is a vector then we have force force also is a vector because uh, well it includes acceleration and force always has a direction whenever you talk about a force you say okay force some force in this direction or some force in this direction so this is also a vector and we already have our answer then the answer should be a but let's think through other options also so we also have density now density is not a vector think about it density is just a property like mass density is mass divided by volume
density is mass divided by volume both of these over here are scalars therefore this is not a vector this is a scalar then we have pressure and pressure again is a scalar because when we talk about pressure let's say we have a container I think pressure is a scalar because pressure does not have any direction pressure is in every direction so there's a pressure exerted by the gas inside in every direction because therefore pressure is also a scalar and therefore I think the option that is correct should be A. Question number 8. We have a ball over here, the sphere represented by a circle here and there's a wall. The ball is moving towards the wall and it has a momentum of 25 kg meters per second. Now the ball will obviously bounce back and that's what the question says. So the ball bounces back once it touches the wall and then it bounces back in this direction and again the momentum will remain the same because it is an elastic collision. But there is a difference, there is actually a change in momentum. Momentum is a vector and as we discussed in the previous question, in question number 7, vectors have direction. Therefore over here momentum is in the opposite direction. So this will actually be minus 25 kg meters per second. Now we have been told that the time taken during the collision is 50 milliseconds which is 0.05 seconds. There's a very good property of force. So whenever we think about force we think of energy but in fact there's a formula. Force is actually equal to change in momentum by change in time. And I think over here we can directly replace all the quantities and find the force. Let's try it. The final momentum we have is minus 25 kg meters per second and the initial was just 25. So this in the brackets is the initial and this is final. And then we can divide it by a change in time which is 0.05. Now solving this equation we get minus 1000 and it is in newtons because it is a force. The point is it says minus 1000 because the wall is applying a force in this direction. Therefore it says minus 1000. You don't need to bother about the minus sign. The equation is completely, this solution is completely valid and the answer will be D because the wall is applying force in this direction. That's why you get a minus here. The magnitude of that force is 1000 newtons and D is our answer. Which device is designed to convert chemical energy into kinetic energy? So an AC generator converts electrical, sorry, the, it converts Ke to electrical energy. A battery powered torch that does convert chemical energy, but that converts it into light. A car engine. A car engine converts K, where it converts chemical, the fuels, into kinetic energy for the wheels to move. So that must be the correct answer. Moving on to question number 12, we have an object, let's just say it's a ball over here and then it is falling a distance of 12 meters, so a height of 12 meters. And the change in potential energy is 565 joules the frictional forces are negligible. So currently we are only talking about gravity. We don't care about air resistance at all. What is the speed when it hits the ground? Okay, so you might know the formula for potential energy which is equal to m into g into h. Over here we know the change in potential energy. So we can just say 565 equals m 565 equals m which we have no clue about what m is m should be the mass of the object which we don't know multiplied by g which is acceleration due to gravity which is equal to 10 meters per second square multiplied by h and we know h it is 12 so using this we can find the mass of the object and i'm getting the mass to be equal to 4.71 kgs approximately now the question asks, what is the speed when it hits the ground? 
Now we know that there is a change in energy which is equal to 565 joules. So where does this energy go? This energy is obviously getting converted into kinetic energy. So therefore we can instantly say that the gravitational potential energy has been changed to kinetic energy and therefore as I'm writing the formula Ke equals half mv square I can also say that this Ke is actually equal to 565 joules and I'll perform the calculations now now according to my calculations this is the answer we are getting and as we get this answer the option that is correct should be B